let's take a look at this week's assignment. Greetings from MJC. Now, you'll notice that there are two different sets of sizes to work on. One is your workspace, which will be uh, 4.25 inches by 5.6 inches, or you can flip that around so that it's 5.6 uh, inches by 4.25 inches. I want you to work at 300 uh, pixels per inch, 300 ppi. The other one is to turn in. Notice that it's the same number of inches. You can either have it landscape or you can have it uh, vertical portrait but I want you to turn in 150 PPI. So in other words, when you come in here and you've created a new document that fits the correct sizes. So let's say that I'm doing this horizontally. Most postcards are horizontal. Some of them are vertical. It's, it's not a big deal either way. But let's say that I am doing this uh, on a landscape mode. So it's horizontal. So the width is longer than the height is tall. Here we go, 0.25. So when I'm working, I'll go ahead and work in a 300 pixel per inch size. And I'm just going to go ahead and pop it out. So it'll look about like that. But let's say that I've done a lot of uh, absolutely brilliant work. I'm going to, I have a Cintiq, a second monitor over here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, make another view, break that off, and then just move that down to where my Cintiq is so that I can quickly paint. And I'm just going to grab the brush tool with B on the keyboard, hit uh, D to get the default colors, X to flip those colors around, bracket key on the keyboard a couple of times to make a smaller brush, and boom, now I can make my masterpiece. Beautiful. All right, so I have this absolutely amazing postcard going on. So it's time for me to save this for myself. Now, the one that I'm going to be keeping for later will be the larger size, the 300 pixels per inch. So I'll go ahead and I'll save as. And at this point, it's probably a good idea to start organizing your files. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder. And I'm going to name this Greetings from MJC. And I'll go ahead and call this uh, the assignment. Two in progress. And I'll go ahead and give it some numbers at the end so I can iterate them as I want to go. So now I've got this working document. When it's time for me to actually turn this in, I'm going to go to image, image size, and then I'm going to crank this down to 150. This will make it much, much smaller file-wise. And now I'm going to save a new copy and I'm going to uh, save this in whatever format that's required, and then I'm going to name it correctly and all that good stuff. So I'll come back and I'll see to turn in. It's 150 uh, PPI, so that's fine, and it's format PSD, and that's what we've got. So I'll go ahead and name this my last name, my first name, the assignment number starting with a zero in this case, just so that it's in the double digits. And boom, that would be what I'd turn in. Now, uh, of course, there's another question. Did this meet any of the requirements? Well, let's read a little further along. No, no, it did not. This week's assignment is to show me your skills by creating a postcard. The minimum requirements are as follows. Use at least three copyright-free images or images you own the rights to. Use at least three layers. No more than 20 layers, please. If you go over that, the file size is just going to get too big. You're not going to be able to upload that. Use at least three masks. And I've shown you a number of masking techniques. We'll play with a few more in here. Uh, hopefully some of that was review. Although, honestly, I could probably spend uh, six sessions just going over masks. But there's not really enough time for that. So I'm just going to sprinkle masking in throughout the semester so we can keep playing with those things. Uh, use appropriate text, so please don't, you know, swear me out while you're turning things in. Maybe something postcard-like, like, wish you were here. Welcome to MJC. Greetings from MJC, hence the title. While this is the minimum needed to get a good grade, what I want to see is what you're capable of. Pull out all the stops and show me what you can do. This will allow me to calibrate the class and give you a chance to show off. Have fun. So, truthfully, if you have some skills that you feel 
are very strong or have developed well and you want to display those, show those off, you're worried you're not going to get a chance to do that later in the semester, now's the time to do it. That will let me see what you're capable of. It'll give me a good idea about where you are uh, on your path to becoming a graphic artist. And it will let me know about uh, where to grade. And on that note, I should probably tell you about my grading process. And uh, this goes for everything throughout the semester. You'll notice that uh, this is worth 100 points. Usually assignments are worth 100 points. There are a few cases where they'll be worth fewer. Uh, I believe the first assignment was worth fewer. Additionally, uh, extra credit is usually not worth 100 points. It will be like 25, 50 points, something along those lines. In the case of larger assignments towards the very end of the semester, like the final, those are usually worth more points. And that kind of gets things going in. Here's how I grade on the 100-point assignments. Those first 90 points are generally technical things. So if I've said something in the assignment like what size it should be, what resolution it should be, you know, how many pixels per inch it should be, how many layers you should have, how many, uh, what, what technique you should use, those are where the first 90 points are coming from. So if you did something absolutely beautiful that has nothing to do with the assignment, you probably aren't going to get those first 90 points. Those last 10 points, though, are what I keep for myself to kind of use to calibrate things. So when I go down my rubric and I see that you missed something, but it wouldn't, it, it makes sense how you missed it. It was like a clear misinterpretation or something. Otherwise, everything was very excellent. I can use those 10 points to kind of boost you up. If it's pretty clear that you were did like really great work the last two weeks, and then this one week you just kind of slacked off and it's very apparent I might knock down some points on that. It's also a chance for me to give you points if you did exemplary work. That's the place I'm going to put it in. So essentially, the first 90 points are objective. They're things that are going in here. It's everything you need to get an A. If you just check off the list and everything is what it says on the paper handout, or in this case, the PDF handout, or the JPEG, or however I've told you to do things, even if it's a post online, if those match everything up, you get an A. That's it. You did it. Congratulations. If you want 100%, though, that last 10% subjective. So you're going to want to go above and beyond. And it usually takes my classes a few assignments before they can get to that 100%. Um, and it's usually, uh, it, it, it's pretty tricky. I, at, at the 99%, that means you did absolutely amazing. Those You got nine of those 10 wow points that I reserve for my subjective biased opinions on everything. But that last one, at that point, I'm like, I, I could imagine seeing this in a professional realm. Like this looks like high quality professional work. So if you get 100, I'm really saying congratulations, you you hit, I, I think that you're ready to go with these. You may want to consider using this as a portfolio piece uh, if your portfolio is tailored to uh, use something like in this case postcards. If you're like, oh, I want to show that I can do postcards and letterheads and all those stuff, totally put that in right there. I'd say that this one, this one's worth it. I'm going in. I can also use these occasionally. There will something that just kind of goes wrong. I'll just put in 10 points to boost the grade back up to where it looks like it should be because they're subjective points. Uh, I will never take away points on those 90 if it looks like you actually did the thing. So if I said, you know, the only thing I printed on an assignment is it needs to be 10 inches by 10 inches and you did that, that's 90 points. You know, there's, there's something more. If I have like 200 steps on there, each one of those steps are probably going to not be worth a whole lot of points, but they'll add up or go in, um, things like that. So it depends. Also, uh, I've adjusted the rubric in the past. If I've made a mistake in my lecture or in my videos and I told the class wrong, uh, according to the assignment and the majority of the class does it that wrong way, then I will change my rubric because I goofed on that one. I didn't explain it well. In the event that, uh, I do say something kind of strange, Check what I have uh, printed out on the assignment. Check in the forms to see if I have any updates. Ask questions if you're not sure. I would rather have everybody asking questions that they all think are absolutely ridiculous and pointless than one person not asking an important question. So just help me with everything you got. I will answer these things and we'll be able to get that straightened out. Uh, that's about where it is. Uh, on that note, if like one or two people get things wrong and they felt that I wasn't clear, but everybody else got it right, I'm going to assume that I was clear enough. And so 
you know, there's not a lot of wiggle room on that. I get, I get kind of sniffy, like most instructors from like, well, I think I did a great job communicating to you guys. It was only the two of you that, uh, da, da. but you never know. I might, uh, I might give you an extra point or two if you make a good argument on it. Um, so we'll leave it for there. So that's about the grading. Um, this is the assignment. Let's go ahead and walk through doing one of these and, uh, we'll start off from scratch more or less and see where it goes. I'll see you next video.